in addition to having livestock, you know, the cows and the sheep, we also have a tree farm here. There's about 160 acres of, of pine trees with some hardwoods, but mostly pines. And uh, they're at various stages, which is kind of a good thing. Uh, these trees where we are right now are 32 years old. They were planted in 1989, a part of the Conservation Reserve Program. And so uh, they're, they're really ready for a, a th good thinning right now, uh, but with the prices of timber, it, they just can't hardly get anybody to, to sell it or buy it, even though lumber prices is really high. But uh, most of these trees would go to make lumber uh, or, or at least chip and saw. They would chip up some of it, but uh, some of it would be made into two by fours and two by sixes and that type lumber for, for construction of homes. So, uh, but the, the original reason these trees were planted was to prevent soil erosion. It, this was a soybean field on, and it was really hilly and there was some gullies in it. So those trees were planted to convert cropland to trees or timberland. And, and that was done back in about 1988. It was put in the Conservation Reserve Program and the trees were planted in 1989. So, uh, and you can see with all the pine litter uh, needles and, and leaves on the ground, it's done a really good job of controlling the soil erosion and also growing a crop of trees that can be converted to, into money. The reason that we kind of have pine trees and livestock is that one is that you know the livestock's on the land that, was, what, that we bought that was cleared up and this land is more suited to, to timberland than it would be to pasture land or you know crop land for growing soybeans or whatever. So I, we, I feel like I'm utilizing my land to its best potential and, uh, you know, to prevent, to prevent the, and, and have the least amount of erosion on it and, and still let it work for me too. You know, it, what good is it to have land if you're not going to allow it to help you and, and, and I help the land too. I try to protect it and keep it uh, from eroding and then I also do burns and other things. Got fire lanes and logging lanes around through here that make it good easy access so these trees can can help me and I try to help them just like I help the livestock and they help me. Okay, these trees are ready to thin and uh, mm -hmm. uh, there's these, the sawmills in this area, area uh, are kind of particular on what trees they take. And uh, the logger that I use, he's planning on cutting these as soon as he gets the okay to cut them. Uh, and he won't clear cut them, he'll just thin them. And, uh, but th that sawmill that he will take them to does what they call a chipping saw. And they'll, they'll chip out uh, the parts that, that won't make lumber, but the parts that do make lumber, like two by fours and two by sixes and maybe four by fours, they'll cut those out. And then, like I say, the rest of it is chipped up. So you get, you use everything. You don't waste anything on that tree. And so that's our hope is sometime in the next year or so to, to thin these. And uh, he'll probably take out the larger trees because pine trees will respond to open canopies that that's the, the pine needle part of the tree up, up where the leaves are when you open that area up and it gives them more sunlight that tree will grow again right now they're kind of slowing up because they they're kind of crowded up top and uh, when you open that up by taking out some of the trees it allows the smaller ones to grow better you know, most of our pine trees that we have now are planted by hand but there is an aspect of it called uh, natural regeneration and you can see we've got the big pines here. They were planted back in 1989. But this, this is one that, that's seeded in. And this is another one. This is a bigger, bigger tree. And then here's, here's some smaller ones here also. Now, you don't want your seedlings that thick. You want them spaced out more like on a 6 by 8 or 6 by 10 spacing. And that's the, the good side of hand planting pine trees. Where, if, where you let natural regeneration come in, they get crowded and uh, the, the dominant tree, like this tree is the dominant one over some of these smaller ones, it'll be the one that will make the nice tree at some point. Now, these trees aren't totally useless because their competition with this tree makes this tree grow straighter and be a nicer tree, whereas these may be pulpwood trees eventually and they may not they may die out because they can't get enough sunlight but all of the trees growing together help supports each other tree and makes them
grow a good straight tree, and that's what the loggers want. That's what you'd want if you're going to saw lumber out of it. Now we'll uh, kind of go over to some area where I've done some prescribed burning, and you'll be able to see there's this has never been burned, and you can see there's a lot of trash and litter, and a, actually a lot of stored fuel in in this litter on the ground. And if we had a wildfire, real dry season and wildfire, this would burn really, really hot and, and do some damage to the trees. And where we're fixing to go, you'll see that uh, there's not much litter, pine needles and, and leaves on the ground. So if that were to burn, it would be at a lot cooler fire and a lot shorter flame height. And where this would be a pretty good flame height. Hey, we're in uh, an area that I, I did a prescribed burn on last year, in other words, 2020. It was in April, early part of April. And what my objective was, was to knock back some of this hardwood that uh, was starting to be in, in coming in here in this uh, pine plantation. And it doesn't, ki it kills the upper portion of the, of the hardwood. This was a little hickory, but in a few weeks, probably, uh, there's gonna be new growth down close to the ground. And that new growth makes it available for wildlife, deer and rabbits and whatever else it wants to eat those leaves and those buds and all. So like this, this is a little white oak and uh, it's not easy to break off yet, but it's dead. I mean, as far as the upper portion of it and it'll put out new sprouts down here. And see, here's a blackberry bush. Uh, deer like to browse on that. So a fire, a prescribed burn controls a lot of uh, vegetation. And as far as the pines are competing with it, but it puts also the browse layer close to the ground where those animals can get to it. And uh, it also burns up a lot of the excess fuel that's on the ground to prevent wildfires. This was a con control burn or a prescribed burn. And if you have a wildfire through here, you can't control it. But if you, if you have fire lanes and, and pick your days when the wind is certain uh, directions, uh, then you can control your fire and do a much better job. But if you let a, a wildfire go through here in the wrong direction, uh, it could burn my house down or somebody else's house down or put a lot of smoke on the highway and that can cause accidents and even death. So it's very important whenever you do a burn that you, you uh, get a prescribed burn plan for this area. And you, you don't wanna put smoke at a school or smoke on a nursing home where people could have respiratory problems. So wildfires, uh, you know, that it's no regard for that type thing, but when you do a prescribed burn, you have a plan that you have to follow. And you, in other words, you've already done your research and know uh, where schools are, hospitals, anything that could cause a problem with a, a, a congregated uh, area of people. You can see the, the burn uh, black on the tree here. The outer part of a pine tree will burn, but it's got a, enough bark there that it's gonna protect the the interior growth area, which is called the cambium layer, uh, from the fire. And whereas a, a hardwood tree doesn't have that thick bark and it can damage that. But uh, pine trees are unique in that uh, prescribed burns are ideal way to help lower the, uh, the browse area, but it won't hurt the pine trees. In fact, it helps them. It helps them to, to have more uh, nutrients available to them while these hardwood plants are trying to regrow and you'll never get rid of your hardwoods. And uh, this is just a way of kind of controlling them, helping them uh, push them back down closer to the ground for the wildlife.